Hey guys, it's Ben with Pulsar2121 Games. Today we are going to install a reed valve and a high performance Kaihin carburetor. Stay tuned. Here's all the parts for our kit. We have the carburetor and the fuel drain hose there. And then we have the reed valve and enclosure. Um, you can kind of see in there the, the reed valves. What they do is they keep air from coming in back from the engine when it's on the upstroke so uh, it doesn't change your air fuel mix ratio. So it kind of acts like uh, a valve would in, uh, in like an intake valve in a uh, regular four stroke engine. Um, except it's just uh, cards kind of like going like this over a triangle to let the air in and out. Um, and then we got the little spacer plate here and couple of bolts and lock washers um, and then a little hose that you use to uh, connect the uh, carburetor over to the um, the reed valve so uh, that's just to give yourself some room around the frame and I checked on my motor and my bike and I definitely uh, will need that little adapter and hose there so first things first I did not get an intake gasket for this I can use uh, here I can use this the intake gasket that came with the engine kit for the mating surface from here to here but uh, once we get to the mating surface from here to here there's no gasket uh, so I'm gonna make one out of some uh, cork gasket material here um, yeah, so it's just made out of cork. You can get it at any auto parts store. Um, so we'll just trace out our own. I'll move that over to the side here. So first thing, we'll just cut off a little piece so it's easier to work with. I'm using a small scissor so I can uh, get around the corners a little bit easier. Um, you can get a real adult scissors <laughs> if you want. Um, so yeah, basically we're just going to line it up like this and then trace the pattern onto the paper. All right, there we go. We'll just cut this out here. Now I'm just going to find a scrap piece of wood here as a cutting block. Um, yeah, this will do. And then use a razor blade here to cut out the inside. Be careful not to cut yourself. And then you want to be careful when you're cutting those corners not to go to the edge here. All right, and there's our nice little gasket. All right, so now we have our gasket. Um, we still have to make the holes for the, uh, for the bolts to go through. Um, it should be thick enough where we can actually drill them. Uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty thick material. So uh, I'm just going to line it up there and then get this started. Okay, and then that should give me my mark. Okay, so I have my marks here. Okay, that hole's drilled. Okay. All right. And that is how you make a custom gasket. Okay, so I've just noticed that the stock intake gasket is, uh, oh, whoops, it's uh, decreasing airflow quite a bit. You can see there's the little hole there in the stock one, and then here's the one that I just made. Not exactly uh, a comparison. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and make another one of these 
for that other mating surface because this gasket is it's junk <laughs> let's be honest it's it's garbage we're gonna lose quite a bit of power if we use it so I'm just gonna go ahead and make another one of these and uh, once they're cut out you just want to uh, hose them down with a little bit of uh, WD-40 just uh, to get them all nice and squishy so uh, that they uh, install well um, later on just about five minutes of sitting is all they need once they have the oil on. Okay, so now that we have both of our gaskets cut out and soaking in WD-40, we're gonna set that off to the side here. And now we are going to remove the old intake studs uh, using the double nut method. If you're not familiar with the double nut method, go check out my, uh, my HD uh, stud kit installation video. All right, now that we got uh, those studs out, we can go ahead and move on to installing the new reed valve kit with its own studs. Uh, actually, its own screw set here with Allen keys. Um, first thing we're gonna have to do is separate this case here. All right, so here is the actual reed valve. Now, like I said, it's like uh, like playing cards. See that triangle there? So air can only go in this way, and when it does, these little flaps bend up. Um, and if air tries to go this way from the intake, when it's going on its uh, firing stroke, it pushes against here, and the springs keep it down so it can't actually backflow into the carburetor. It's a pretty nifty little deal. Um, so here's our, well, I guess it's actually a throttle body is what it's going to end up being. Um, we're going to attach that to our little adapter here. Oh, grab a gasket first. All right, and then they come with lock washers. Just, uh, well, they put lock washers on everything on these motors. Uh, they don't want them vibrating apart. Whether or not that still happens, well, it does. <laughs> but it helps a little. You can also use Loctite. I've talked about that before. Um, I just don't plan on putting a whole bunch of miles on mine. I'm sure I'll take it apart again very soon because uh, there's always going to be more mods. <laughs> okay, so there's gasket number one. Then, let's see here, install that. Okay, and now we're going to take gasket number two here. Ooh, I think that one soaked a little too long. <laughs> It's a little mushy, but uh, that's what you want. You just have to be really careful. All right, and there is our spacer block, and that'll just screw in right there. It's really important to get your intake tight, because if you have any leaks at all, it'll throw off your carburetor uh, air-fuel ratio, and that is uh, will make it run extremely lean if you get it wrong. So there we go. We have two custom gaskets, our adapter plate, our reed valve housing slash throttle body. Um, now we're just going to go ahead and put the reed valve in. All right, now I'm just going to torque these down with the with the wrench here. I'm gonna use the thumb method so I don't overdo it on these ones because these ones are going into a lot less grabbing surface. Uh, as you can see, they're not as nearly as long and they're a lot more prone to, to pull out of the uh, threads. All right, that's on pretty good. Now we can move on to the carburetor. All right, so here's the easiest part of the video. Uh, we're just going to tighten up the hose clamp here on the air filter. 
And then after that, we're just going to uh, slide that rubber hose over the, uh, the intake here and then uh, tighten down those hose clamps. I really like this uh, element filter here. This, uh, was that a cotton element, I'd say? Yeah, it does look like that. Some c cotton or synthetic fibers here. Um, it's a lot better than the air filter that comes with the NT carbs uh, that are included in the kit. Um, I don't know if you've uh, put a lot of miles on those uh, NT carbs before, but uh, <laughs> they get plugged up with dirt uh, really quickly, especially if you live on uh, gravel or drive a lot on gravel. All right, here, loosen those up a little bit. It looks like we're going to need a little bit of lithium grease. And that should help things slide on together. that side on and then the carburetor I'll just go right here there we go now the metal pieces are touching if you heard that click together so we'll just go ahead and tighten these hose clamps up like so all right and there you have it we have our spacer, custom intake gaskets, reed valve, and our Kaihin carburetor with a fuel drain hose, which will come in handy. All right, thanks for watching today, guys. There's going to be more things happening with the motorized bike, and pretty soon we will be putting parts on that bike right there that is out of set. So like I said, subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll see you next time.